We are broadcasting live. All right, well, good morning, good morning, beautiful power sisters here. Happy, happy Monday. This is the third week of September. I don't know about you, but this month and this quarter has gone by so fast, but we have done so much. We've had some fantastic conversations and trainings in here, and we're just going to do it again today. So I'm very, very honored and very excited to introduce you to a new friend of mine who's becoming a really dear friend of mine, um, Janet Dan Danielson. We met through a mutual friend, Brian Mariani. You all know Brian. Brian has been in here a couple times when we were doing some other things with Positive Prime. And um, these two individuals, and Jana has become just a powerhouse. This woman is well knowledgeable. She is very, very successful and has just the sweetest and most dearest heart. Like every time I come around, I'm like, this woman is brilliant. <laughs> and so I knew I had to introduce her to you so that you can have the same experience that I have. And also introduce you to um, this amazing new product that she has created that I now have and have been using and has been a huge benefit in my own life. And I, you know me, y'all know me. I'm always going to bring you tools and resources that is going to support you and becoming successful in your own personal life. So Jana, thank you so much for being here with me this morning, all the way from Mexico. I think that's where you are, right? Mexico, that's where I am. Yeah, Dr. Nita, thank you for having me. I'm excited to connect with your community. And um, I just want to acknowledge you and the creation of bringing these women together because I feel like there are moments where we look for shiny stars and if we can, you know, it takes a village. And I think somewhere, somehow, some why, we believe as women, we need to do it all on our own. So and, true. you know, when we show up like this in community, it's, you know, really the, I mean, the sky's the limit, but it really isn't the limit. So um, thank you for having me here. I'm so honored and excited. Yeah, I'm. the group knows, all of our power sisters know that uh, I believe that collaboration is the new denomination. Like that is what we need to be doing in order to have great success in our own personal life and in our business. So before Jana gets started, let me tell you a little bit about um, and then I'll have her, I'll have some uh, specific questions I want to ask her, and then she's going to give us some insight into what the future ball actually probably go get that so we can. Jana, do you have the cooch ball nearby or do I need I to go grab mine? No, she right has now. it. Okay. <laughs> She's ready to go. I have one too, just so everybody knows. Um, but let me read her bio to you real quickly. So Jana yeah. Danielson is an award-winning wellness entrepreneur who through her own experience with physical pain turned her mess into a message, which has now become her mission which I absolutely love. She's an Amazon best-selling author, founder of a Lead Pilates and Lead Integrative Health Therapies and the Meta District, her online wellness community. Um, she is the creator of the Peach Ball that you just saw and is the world, which is the world's first patent pelvic floor exercise tool for women. Jana has coached and consulted with tens of thousands of women from all around the world to helping them improve their quality of life, their confidence, and their impact in the world. And you know, she's definitely a powerhouse woman that we're ready to have an amazing conversation with. So Jenna, tell me first and foremost, a little bit about your journey. You know, how did you get to where you are today? You've gone through your own ups and downs and just basically listening to your bio, you've gone through your own experience of pain. How did that bring you to where you are today? So, I mean, I'm a product of a process is is what I how I like to frame it. Um, I'm a farm girl from Canada, grew up with, you know, wide open prairie. Um, my mom grew huge gardens, we spent our summer holidays, you know, weeding and hilling potatoes <laughs> and all of those things that farm kids do. And as I was getting close to the end of my high school years, I started experiencing some digestive pain. Now, my dad, as a farmer would have rolls of Tums, like those antacid candies yes. in his, in his half ton truck. Like he would just eat Tums like they were breath mints. And wow. so I was like, right. It's just, I'm like, dad, I have a, he has a stomach thing. I have a stomach thing. And then my stomach thing became more, I moved away and went to university, started um, my, you know, business school undergraduate experience. And I found the pain not happening every once in a while, but happening every single day. And, mm -hmm. you know, growing up in 
a faith-based family, I would find myself saying my prayers at night and asking God why, like, yeah. Yeah. and and what what you know why and and why me and and what trying to figure out what did I do, do wrong? Do? Yes, I know that story. What did I do right? <laughs> and um, did what most people do is you know I went through a you know a medical journey. I trusted the white coats and the stethoscopes and the prescription pads because when you're sick. That's how I grew up. You go to the doctor, they right. tell you what's wrong. They write you a prescription, you finish your little pills or you finish drinking your pills and then you're good. And this wasn't, this wasn't the case this time for me. And it was the start of a two year journey of doctors and specialists and specialists and more doctors and drinking gross things and getting tests and being poked and prodded. And wow. at the end of that, so I was 21 years old at that point, I was on 11 different medications and, wow. and the thing is, and I'm sure some of your audience understands this, is that on the outside, to everybody else that is seeing you with their eyes, you look healthy, you look normal, you right? And on the inside, right. I was slowly just dying because I, away. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I became a shell of who I was. I became very withdrawn. I was, you know, finishing my degree. My high school sweetheart had just uh, proposed to me. We were newly engaged and thoughts of why would I marry this man? Is this like giving him a jail sentence of a wife who I, mm. he wanted kids. I wanted kids. Would I ever be able to be a mom, carry a baby, deliver a baby? I couldn't even get out of bed some mornings. How would I care for a newborn baby? And then, you know, those voices in your head can be very, very um, convincing. And I just wondered, like, maybe, maybe, maybe I should just do yeah, him. I'm not sure if she's stuck on her side yeah. or if she's stuck on my side. Mm. I can still hear you just fine. You're, you're stuck on my side, but I can hear you. So hopefully your audience can still hear me. We'll just wait a second. Okay, so Dr. Anita has given me hosting privileges. So I'm just going to continue with my story and she will pop back in. I'm, I'm confident of that. So um, I ended up going to my doctor for an appointment, a regular appointment. And my doctor at that point said to me, Jana, we believe that the pain is in your head and that you're seeking attention and we wish you a nice life. And my medical team essentially was breaking up with me. They believed there was nothing more that they could do because my diagnosis wasn't fitting or my symptoms weren't fitting into a diagnosable box. And so I hit a low in my life and I felt very depressed and I spent about three months just not knowing what my next steps were going to be, right? I had a new job and we were planning our wedding and I had my Madonna moment where I was in line at the grocery store and there was Madonna in, you know, when you were in line for groceries, there's the magazine rack and she was on the cover of a fitness magazine and the word Pilates was smattered across it. And I bought the magazine because I was a big Madonna fan, still am. And I read the article about this form of movement called Pilates, which was all about breathing, was all about spinal alignment, moving your spine in different ways. And when I looked at the pictures in the magazine, oh, there she is. There she is. Did, did it drop you? No, it didn't. It dropped you. So I've just kept going. Oh, good. <laughs> That's great. She'll be back. I knew she was. So I just kept going. So That's so uh, funny because you dropped out on my side. <laughs> Okay, well, we'll so see. So we're back. I'm okay, glad you kept back. going. We're Keep back. Going. Kept going. Okay. So when I when I saw Madonna on, Madonna on the cover of that magazine and I saw Pilates and I bought that issue and I read the article, my brain and what it knew about fitness, about 
no pain, no gain. Um, if it doesn't, you know, it's got to hurt to be worth it. Yeah. And I read this yeah. article about this form of movement. And I was like, but how, like, it doesn't make sense. Right. And so I went to my first Pilates class and I, and I couldn't do a damn thing. I couldn't breathe the way they were breathing. I couldn't move the way they were breathing. And if I wasn't in my Janet Danielson self, and I hadn't gone to the front row in the class in front of the teacher, yes, I would have quietly rolled my mat up if I was in the back row and I would have just exited stage left and no one would have been the wiser. Yeah. But I did what I normally do is I, I want, I want the full experience. I, I know that's the right. Room, right. And, um, after class, my, like the class kind of, you know, dispersed and my instructor walked up to me and the tears just started falling oh, wow. and she wrapped her arms around me. And all she said was come back on Thursday. That's all she said. Yeah. And I, you know, through my sobs, I just nodded and I left the room mm -hmm. and my husband was in the weight room. And so he was waiting for me in the hallway and he's like, so I walk out, my eyes are like, I've been chopping onions, right? Like they're swollen and right. my nose is snotty. And he's like, what? what you're just, you're like, why is it supposed to be good for you? You're not supposed to cry. Exactly. And I just, I just said to him, I have to come back on Thursday. And that was the start of my healing process. And 16 mm -hmm. weeks after that day, I had weaned myself off of all my medication. My <laughs> body was completely... I mean, maybe not completely different, but well on its way. And here's the major thing I learned out of that experience, everyone, was that for so many years, I was looking outside of myself for healing. Oof. And what I realized over those four months is I was looking in the wrong place because the healing was within me. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not saying that I didn't, and I still, I mean, th that's why I have an integrated health therapies clinic. I mean, I have clinicians that help people move through pain and discomfort. And we teach people that they cannot rely on or should not rely on that one clinician, because if they're missing the within, what can be impacted from without is limited. And that's what I learned that day, that my healing was within me. My trust. Wait, 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 say that again, because that's really powerful, especially because of all the things that we've been going through right now. If yeah. you're not connected to what's within, you, you're limited with what's connected on the outside. You're limited with what's outside. Exactly. That's huge. I think right. that's like a hashtag moment. <laughs> well, you know, well, you know, yeah, drop the mic, right? Because I think working in this industry now for almost 20 years, the discomfort and the pain that we experience physically, emotionally, and spiritually usually goes in that order, right? Like there is a physical discomfort. And so we are trained to deal with that physical pain. My back hurts. I have menstrual cramps. I've got migraine headaches. Yes. And so we prescribe to how do I, how do I deal with that pain? Do I go and get an over-the-counter medication? Like, what do I do to get out of that pain? But here's what happens. When you start to dig a little deeper, we start to touch into, and this is where your magic happens, right? Like the emotionality of yes. who we are is tied into that physicality. And then if you dare go another layer deeper into what is the spiritual meaning That's behind right. this That's pain, right. right? Like, so many times I've helped men and women with low back pain, right? They'll come in, they're presenting low back pain, right? So we'll start right away with breathing because the transverse abdominus is the deepest set of abdominals to our core. They give us posture. It supports our spine. It supports our organs. It shapes our body. All right. And so we'll start there. I'll start people and, and nine times out of 10, people are not breathing properly. They breathe into their neck and their collarbone. That's, that's, that's right. Breathing they're not using their diaphragm so once we understand that then and sometimes the emotional body will show itself immediately I'll teach someone how to properly diaphragmatically breathe they'll be laying on their mat and there will be tears Jesus. yeah or there will be laughter or there will you can tell that there's anger like this starts to come up and then at the end of the day what we find out is from a spiritual perspective maybe that person is feeling a lack of support in their life 
or maybe they are supporting, like they are it's like, like the, mm -hmm. yeah, they're like the foundation, you know, mm -hmm. of a house for someone else in their life. And they're, and right. you're like, I can't do it anymore. I can't, I, this is too the late. weight of it starts to collapse them. So because we are spiritual beings having a human experience, that spiritual rooted why becomes an emotionally rooted why, which over time become, becomes a physically rooted why. And that's why we'll get into the cooch ball, but that is what's become one of my passions is, is helping women with their, with their personal, intimate, sensual health, because we are meant to be, you know, juicy being yes. Yes. versus like these shadows of who we really are. And um, so that was my, that's, that was my, that was my experience. And I started figuring stuff out for myself, like what worked for me. I got certified in Pilates and then people started noticing a difference in my persona, my confidence yeah. at work, how I was showing up. And they started asking questions like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. And at that point, my answer was, well, I'm doing Pilates. Well, do you have a class? Like, where do you go? And I was like, well, I, I, cause at that point I got certified in, in uh -huh. teaching. I was like, well, I have classes. So people started coming to classes. Then they would come to class and I would refer them out to massage therapy or chiropractic or acupuncture. Right. Yes. And that was out of the basement of my house. While I was building my human resource consulting business, I was working in executive leadership development. I was working in um, organizational redesign. I was working in outplacement, right? And so I was helping businesses get healthy, but my passion really ended up being helping bodies get healthy so that their family could function, right. Their right. Could function right. in a different way, right. right? And so I started teaching out of my home in 2008. Four classes turned into eight, turned into 12, turned into 16. Wow. We were still farming at that time. So we sold some extra grain and we bought some Pilates equipment. So I started teaching private sessions. And within that year, my husband, Jason is like a, a um, he's like a, a mirror for me. And he's like, I came upstairs one day from teaching and, and our boys were like, our boys now are 17, 19 and 21. Then they were like three, five and seven. Right. 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 I came upstairs one night from teaching and he was laying on the couch, put the boys to bed and our eyes just like our eyes caught each other. And I, and I, he, the way he looked at me, I said, what? And he said, I wish you could hear what I hear. And I said, what do you mean? He said, I wish you could hear who you become when you are down there educating Ooh. and inspiring. That, that gave me chills. <laughs> yeah. And he said, when are you going to realize that this is what you're meant to do? Yeah. So I have an idea. I'm, this is him talking. I'm going to quit my corporate job. I'm going to come and take over for you, the consulting business that you're growing so that you can build this studio. What a partnership. Yeah. And Ooh. that's what we did. So in 2010, we opened our first studio, a beautiful 2000 square foot facility. It grew and it grew and it grew in 2015. We expanded because my mind was thinking bigger. Yes. What else could I do? How else could I impact? Could I find people that believed in what I did, that the body was an integrated, you know, system? Yes. And I found people, I found chiropractors who believed in what I believed in. I found massage therapists, I found physiotherapists. And so I we have a 9,000 square foot facility. We've got a team of 50 plus clinicians, instructors, and administrators that serve tens of thousands of people in our local community in Canada that walk through our doors every month. To be better versions of ourselves. This. And then right in 2019, I went online and the Meta District was born because I wanted to impact outside of my geographical little province in Canada. And that gave me more confidence. And then, of course, pelvic floor health has become a very big um, passion project of mine. And that's where the idea for the cooch ball came. And, you know, Jason reared his head again. And he's like, hey, Jason. <laughs> Yeah, because I was complaining to him. I was like, no one in my workshops, no one in my classes have the, I, I teach these workshops on pelvic floor health and through movement and no one asks questions. But then it was like a full inbox or a lineup of women after the, you know, 
in tears saying, you're talking to me. I feel yeah. like I'm the only one. Yeah. And I was like, why can't we even, we can't even say the like, we don't even say vagina. We don't even say true. Pelvis. So say true. Down there. And so again, I drew my line in the sand and I was like, I'm going to do something about it. And that's when the cooch ball was born. And um, I now, you know, get to impact women in another way and start the conversation that we think or in the past has been I'm, I'm, I'm getting like a taboo you know, or something menopause yeah like I'm, I'm in menopause therefore I should be wearing these adult diapers that I see on tv or I just had a baby therefore I should be peeing while I go for my run right, right we right. subscribe to these beliefs and we also subscribe do you guys know that the incontinence product industry is a 15 with a B billion dollar industry. That's right? crazy. Billion. And so we wow. are buying what, like we're picking up what those companies are putting down, believing that that's our only option. And we know through research that in nine out of 10 cases, pelvic floor issues are movement slash fitness issues because they're muscles, ladies. These are muscles. Wow. So if you're not working your arm muscles, your arm muscles are you're not going to be strong, right? You're going to get wings. <laughs> I woke up one day and had wings and just went, what, wait, where'd that come from? Because I wasn't working them out. It makes complete sense. Exactly. So that's the empowering piece in all of this is that for 90% of us, yes, 10% of us do need the pelvic floor mesh pinup surgery. Yes. Okay. But 90% of us don't. Yeah. And what if you could just be inspired and educated a little bit about your body? Because what the cooch ball is, is it's a three minute a day practice. And this is a little bit of tough. Don't, do not tell me that you do not have three minutes for yourself. Oh, in right? The day, right. I agree 100%. And it's not true. So, you know what, that's been my, that's been my kind of humble beginnings from that farm girl to, you know, what I'm doing today. You know, Janet, you know, we've been talking for the past, what, three months now, four months now? For sure, four months, yeah. About four months now since we've met through Brian. And I already knew that you were brilliant, but I had no idea the depth of your story. I had no idea the impact that you yourself have gone through and how you've turned it around to actually make an impact to thousands of women around the world. And the reason why I love this story so much, and I'm getting just chills listening to you, it's because this group and my passion is about taking that mess. You know, I haven't even shared my, my whole story with the community yet. It's coming very, very soon. I was waiting for something to happen. It's now happening. And so once it's final, I'm going to come in and say, okay, now I'm going to show you my story. That's a, a little bit like yours, but not from the, um, the health perspective, but maybe more so from the mental, emotional perspective, which is how I fell into psychology because I had to deal with my own little challenges. And so I love... I love that there's so many nuggets that you've had within this whole entire story. And what I want all of our powerhouse sisters to hear is that no matter what you've gone through, everything serves a purpose for your highest good to change someone else's life as well. Not only your own, but someone else's life as well. Can we go a little bit more deeper into the power of the cooch ball and why we need to be doing this? Because I, I will tell you when you sent it to me, yeah. And um, the first time I used it, I instantly, instantly, it's almost like as soon as I sat on it, my back tilted and my lower back pain instantly was gone. And I went, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> it's like when I bought my new bed, I went, wait a minute, this is, this yeah. is very different. And what's going to happen as I use this? And I started to feel myself strengthen, like my core yeah. and my lower back is strengthening. I do use it. I don't use it every day, Jenna, but I do use it every week, yeah. <laughs> every, at least two, three times yeah. a week I'm using yeah. it. And I use it for longer than three minutes. It just, Amazing. you know, you can watch yeah. TV using it and it works great. Yeah. So tell us about why is this so important for us yeah. right now? And I have a funny feeling it's also connected to our own energy and how we manifest things in our life. So, oh, gosh. okay. This is going to be good. So, um, let me start to paint this picture so that everyone understands something about their body that you might not understand. 
So when you hear someone say, like, I got to strengthen my core, you might think, oh, they're going to do like ab crunches, right? Yes. Our core, so many people think is our six pack muscle, that that six pack that we chase and chase and chase yes. the magazines and billboards tell us is the sign of a fit, healthy body. Ladies, sisters, I'm here to tell you that is a myth. That is a lie. That is mm. something that needs to end today because your core is actually a three-dimensional cylindrical system. All right. So let me help. Hey. Let's, let's build this out. Okay. So underneath your skin, you have your six pack muscle, your rectus abdominis. If you have a low enough body fat percentage, you can see the muscles. That's very rare. And in a woman's body, because we need a certain amount of body fat to be able to procreate and have, or just have a, a menstrual cycle, right? Yes. For some of us, it's just not in the cards, right? The six pack muscle of all the abdominal muscles is the least functional. Here's what it does. It sits you up out of bed. It stands you up when you tie your shoes, right? Those are the motions it's in charge of. So if it was a stock, if someone, if I was a stockbroker and someone said, I want to buy stock in the abdominal area, I would say, don't buy the six pack stock because you're not <laughs> going to get a good return on your investment. That's what I would tell you, right? right? Which is opposite to what many personal trainers would tell you. So as we build this out, you have your six pack muscle right under your skin. The next layer of abdominal muscle is this big letter X and your letter X is made up of two oblique muscles. The internal oblique on one side attaches to the external oblique on the other. And it makes like okay. a padded sash kind of okay. uh -huh. the other side is like a seatbelt. Okay. Someone calls your name, you turn your shoulder checking on the freeway. You turn it. It makes you turn, it makes you bend side to side. It gives you shape deeper to that letter X muscle is the corset muscle. This is the, this is the transverse of okay. So it's like a corset, it is. It starts at your low back and it thickens as it comes along your ribs to the front and it comes to the front of your body. It goes all the way up to the top of your, just below your breastbone and it goes down to your pubic bone. So it's a huge muscle. This is like the corset. This is what holds us. If you were going to invest, if I was that abdominal, you know, stock market investor, that's the abdominal muscles I want you to invest in. And you do not need one crunch, one sit up, nothing to work that muscle. What you need is the ability to breathe diaphragmatically. And when you breathe huh. diaphragmatically, you are in a, in a core strengthening experience with your body. All right. Now we've built huh. the cylinder. But the cylinder has a floor and the cylinder has a ceiling. So the ceiling of the cylinder is your diaphragm. It's the big muscle of respiration. It mm -hmm. lives in your rib cage like an open umbrella or like a mushroom cap. Okay. And then the floor of your core is your pelvic floor. Here's how these two muscles work together. They're physically related because they live on top of each other. Like one's on the ground floor, one's on the third floor, let's say. And here's the thing of how the nerves, the communication system runs between them. When we stop breathing diaphragmatically, it is not if there will be pelvic floor dysfunction, it's but when. it's when. Because when the wow. diaphragm is quiet and passive, the pelvic floor by virtue of that is quiet and passive. All right. So we have in our pelvis, I call the pelvis our cauldron because mm -hmm. it is yes. where magic happens. Yes. For a lot of women, we carry tension through our head, neck, and shoulders. Right. And through our pelvis. And it can mm -hmm. be trauma-based. It can be menstrual cycle based because every month you hunker down into those menstrual cramps or that bloated feeling where you're just like, can you wake me up in seven days? Because I just want to, like, yeah. you know, um, and so through the course of all of that, you know, abdominal surgeries, uh, motor vehicle accidents, babies, like all these things, um, there's a lot of dysfunction in that area Makes and sense. we become disconnected which means some of us pretend it's not there 
We don't even know what it's called. We don't know what it looks like. We don't know how it's supposed to function. And here's the beautiful thing about these energy centers, also known as chakras. Mm -hmm. The pelvis itself, like the root chakra, Yes, it is like right between the anus and the perineum, which happens to be right where you sit on your cooch ball. So there's yeah. no, there are no coincidences, ladies. There are no coincidences. Do you know what your root energy center does for you? It makes you feel safe. It gives you confidence. Mm -hmm. It gives you the ability to self, um, kind of self administer what's coming to you in your life. Okay, so that's how the pelvic floor responds to our, our breathing. So what does a diaphragmatic breath look and sound like? I was going to ask that question for sure. <laughs> like one hand here on your sternum, this flat bone, and one hand on your belly button. And just lose sight of me for a second. Just listen. If you can just soften your eyes, close your eyes. If you were inhaling through your nose, like you were smelling a fresh baked apple pie, try and fill the palm of your belly button hand on the inhale. And as you exhale, try and pull the belly button away from the palm of the hand as the air exits your body. Do that twice more. Inhale, breathe in, fill the hand by the belly button. And then exhale, pull it away. And one more time, inhale into that bottom hand and exhale. All right. If your bottom hand was moving, you're in the diaphragm space. But I'm going to guess that many of you were moving from the top hand, which means you are my little goldfish breathers. You're breathing with muscles that live in your neck called the scalenes and sternocleidomastoids. You're like little fish breathing with your gills. Okay. So that would probably be more shallow. More shallow. Even though you are, you in your head, you're taking in these big breaths. It's not getting probably anywhere below the collarbone. So you're asking these little muscles to be breathers main breathers their their job isn't main breathing their job is holding this bowling ball up on the little piece of wire called our spine so now you're asking these little muscles which are like little strips of beef jerk, uh -huh, right there uh -huh, uh -huh. Right? you're asking them to hold the bowling ball and be the breather when you have this big muscle here that's just on a vacation and and they're like oh, these guys got it covered i'm good and you I have to, I, I have to stop you, Jenna, because I'm I'm kind of floored right now. Okay. And the reason being is, you know, I love getting massages. And yes. so when I get a massage, every single massage therapist tells me, wow, you got a lot of tightness in this area all the freaking time. And then they'll say, Do you suffer with? I'm like, I suffer with migraines. Um, they've been a lot less over the past few years than they were years before. But I, and I, it was funny because as you're asking, where do I breathe? I'm like, I could feel because I intentionally focused on that area. Yeah. But um, I, I don't know if we've been proper, like you just said, we haven't been properly trained to take in that life breath that no. probably keeps us more grounded that yeah. probably makes us feel more full and satisfying just as, as you're processing. So the psychologist in me is, is connecting it to the psychology of everything while you're talking about the physical aspect of it. Absolutely. Well, because you know what it's doing? It is nurturing the parasympathetic nervous system. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so we are tapping in, like we are, we are quieting the sympathetic. We are turning off the you know those stress hormones cortisol, cortisol. Mm -hmm. like when you are breathing shallowly you're even though you don't realize it sitting at your desk your brain the is brain. Thinking, that's why right is she, why is she breathing like that is she in danger do we have to get up and do we have to like start running right and so it's prepping it's prepping it's it's sending blood to your extremities it might be turning off your appetite um like you might think oh I'm not hungry. I'm not hungry today. Where well, anxiety comes from, just so yes. that everybody knows. That's where anxiety comes from. Exactly. Yeah. And you know what? Here's the beautiful thing. Our body is meant to have both a parasympathetic and a sympathetic. Right. That's the right. thing is, is because we have to be able to get out of a situation when we need to. Right. 
Absolutely. We're not meant to stay in stay in it. That's for right. weeks and That's months. Right and years because then your body's like oh my god this is a marathon i don't have enough adrenaline and cortisol to even supply these these thoughts these feelings these emotions and that's where post traumatic stress comes from as well i'm so, just, I can't, i'm so glad you're saying a lot of the stuff cuz i've been saying it in the group for a while and i think they're just going ah, it's just anita and now they're like wait she was right i'm like i'm absolutely right this is how we're trying to calm ourselves down so yeah. that we can heal and it's going to help us manifest the things that we're intending i think exactly. a thousand times better because we're aligning our body in the way that you're teaching well so when you're using the cooch ball you know let's get to the to the how and the why when you our body needs oxygen rich, nutrient rich blood for, yes. it, to, for it to flourish. That's okay? right. We are 75 trillion cells who, that make us who we are. We breathe 6,000 times a day. Imagine if there was just a little dysfunction with each of those breaths. That's a lot of dysfunction over months and weeks and years, right? So when there's a part of our body that is void of nutrient rich, oxygen rich blood, it's like a plant that has not been watered in weeks or months. It might still be living, the leaves might be drooping, the, the soil might be cracked, it might have a white film on the soil. Yes. It's not flourishing, it doesn't have the basis. That's thriving, that. yeah. That's what our muscles are like. So here was my conundrum. How do we bring blood flow to the muscles, the fascial tissue and the nerves of the pelvic floor in a more external, because don't get me wrong, I am a huge proponent of pelvic floor physiotherapy. You can go and I'm, you know, I, I, I do physical therapy in my pelvic floor for myself. Yeah. You can get an internal exam that the, your therapist can work to release some of the tension in those muscles, bring blood flow. Yet I wanted to create something that a woman could throw in, you know, her carry on, yeah. traveling, her, you know, take with her to work and be able to use in a very discreet, simple way that is doing what we needed to do. So if we want to create change in a, in an area of the body, we have to bring oxygen, rich, nutrient, rich blood flow to it. When you're sitting on the cooch ball, here's what happens. The weight of the body on the cooch ball creates almost like if anybody has used a foam roller on your quads yes, before, with yes, like that, yes, kind of like John Cougar's cap hurts so good, right? <laughs> and so, um, that's what the cooch ball does for the pelvic floor when the weight of the body is sitting on the ball. And that's where the patent comes in because it's not just, I went to a department store and bought a kid's ball and I'm going to sit right, on it. Right, right, right. So I get that question all the time and I'm like, yeah, you could just like, if you wanted to bake a wedding cake, you could use an easy bake oven, but would you choose that <laughs> really choose that? Right. So it was, I built this for our body, the way our tissues react. So when you sit on the ball, the weight of the body creates a release through the, the um, muscle, the fascia and the nerve so that nutrient rich blood flow can get to those tissues and like little Pac-Man it just gulps up that blood and it's like flourishing. Is that why, I don't mean to cut you off because now that you're talking, my brain's processing my own experiences because it, it just, every time I use it, I instantly felt, so I have a lower back issue because I got hit by a four car pileup and I was the first one in the front. So I got hit really, really hard. And then I went to chiropractic care and I don't think that that doctor really knew what they were doing. So I've been in lower back pain probably my whole entire life since then okay. yeah and i've done all kinds of massages and stretches and all that kind of stuff but it's yep. never really gone until i got onto the cooch like i instantly felt a relief so yep. if i'm understanding you when i sat on it despite my size my weight my height it activated my floor that started to give it is it the blood and the oxygen that caused that release that instantly? Because that's that's what caught my attention. Why am I feeling such an instant response to sitting on a ball? Well, and a couple of things. So yes to that. And also when we're sitting on the ball, it's a it's an unstable surface, right? It's it's circular. You're not sitting on a flat chair where you can just mush and sit into it, right? right. You had to, unbeknownst to you, when you got on that. Up. That's so true. You, 
right? You didn't roll off it. That's you true. had to engage. You didn't know you were engaging. Otherwise, you would have rolled off the ball, right? Yeah. Whether you use the ball on the floor or on a chair, a hard chair, a soft chair is different because it's going to give you a little bit more support. But so there was, there's like multiple things happening all at once that you as the user, you're just focusing on your breathing because here's the other thing for women who have a pelvic floor that's too tight. And that's where I would say you probably fall into an tension. And that's why your back did that release. It was almost yeah. like those muscles had been holding their breath for years and years and years. And they finally went, right? And everything- so Those who've been traumatized in some sort of sexual abuse who, which I have, unfortunately, um, sometimes we disconnect from that part of our bodies. And because we disconnect because of the trauma um, and the dissociation that is sometimes in nine times of 10 attached to, attached to that trauma, um, the body locks and it's like issues in the tissues. And that's really what you're talking about. There's issues in the tissues that got released. So as soon as you said that, like, that's what happened. It got released. Yeah, that makes so much sense. And now I can understand the ripple effect of why certain things have happened because from a spiritual, even from a physical, you know, real blood is being circulated through my body, which means more energy and vibration. So if I'm sitting there, it all, it all works together, Jenna. <laughs> this is crazy. It all works together, right? And, and that's the beauty of it is that if you have a pelvic floor that's too tight, when you're sitting on the ball, you're getting the release. But simultaneously, there are women that have a pelvic floor that lacks tone. It's called hypotonic, right? So okay. what's happened? So that's why I get women saying, but I don't need more release. I'm too, I'm lacking tone already. But here's the beautiful thing. When you're sitting on the cooch ball and there are, you know, I, I got your back, right? Because you get a full training course called create your pelvic floor upgrade. Um, so you learn through the training that when you're sitting on the ball and if you need to strengthen your pelvic floor, it's the diaphragmatic breathing. Remember I talked about, you get your diaphragm going, you get your pelvic floor going. So whether you're on one side of the spectrum where you're hypertonic too tight or hypotonic lacking tone, mm -hmm. because there is this multi-dimensional experience, you're kind of getting what your body needs through the activation of the breath or the weight of the body on the ball. So it's this beautiful synergistic experience without you have to think about anything but breath. Yeah. And going again. With the ball, is there a certain, and we're coming a little bit to a close, is yeah. there, a, is there's the, so, I kind of like mine firm. So I have, it comes with the little pump. Yes, the pump. Yep. It comes with the pump. Yep. And I like mine pretty firm. And what I've also noticed since I've been using it, it's helped my sciatica. Yes. My sciatica in my right, especially if I drive long drives and I tend to drive yep. a lot, as most of you guys know. And because um, I usually like to do some sort of a live while I'm driving. <laughs> so as I'm driving, um, uh, I've noticed that since I've been using it, I haven't been having that experience. The last time I had a really bad case of it, my whole executive team was with me and they saw me almost in tears because <laughs> it was hurting so much. So using the ball and I do use it on that pretty yeah. regularly. So is there a, is there a certain way you should use the ball? So what I say for optimal usage, when you just start, you want the ball about two thirds full. You want it to be a little bit squishy. Filling it up 100% is not unsafe. It's just if you have a lot of tension, it's like, you know, tense plus tense can sometimes create a little bit of like, uh, like bruising. Yeah. Yeah. Like you might not realize it, but your, your body's protection mechanisms might be turning on because I'm going to tell you, ladies, there is an ouch factor related with this. Okay. But here's the beautiful thing about the ouch factor if you sit on your ball, and your breath, I always say, let your breath be your guide. So if you find yourself holding your breath right. or shallow breathing, get off the ball or take the ball on your couch and sit on the ball. Okay. When you start to do your work consistently, the ouch factor, which is also known as biofeedback, will yeah. start to decrease as you stay consistent because you're going to be creating that environment for change. So today I might have an ouch factor at seven. I can still manage it, but I might not stay for three minutes today. And in two months from now, I might be at an ouch factor of three because that, and that's how, you know, besides less back pain. And yeah. I had a woman um, message me yesterday in my telegram group saying, Jana, 
for the first time in like 15 years, I've been able to sneeze and I don't have to cross my legs to make sure that I don't have an accident. She's like, what is happening? This is amazing. Right. So, um, and you're right. Like I, you know, you can use this. I I use it for like anti-aging. I use it on my hips for like a little cellulite. Yes. Yes. For gut health. So it's, I love it. And I hope I'm glad. I I have been, and I'm, you know, so if I'm looking down, I'm looking at my phone to see if there are any questions, because we do have some women who are watching the responses, Jana, let me just tell you that they're loving what you're saying. They're, they feel like they're learning so much. This is fascinating information. What Jenna's been explaining is so well, like, this is awesome. Um, issues and tissues that people are waiting. There's a lot of hands like, I'm here. <laughs> so we've got, I will definitely put the link. Um, yes, I am supporting Jenna and what she's doing. I know that there's some other big stuff that she's doing in the future. So Jenna will probably be a part of our community. Well, not probably. She will be a part of our community in a very powerful way. We're, I'm hoping to have her come and speak at one of our events that we want to do next year. And just Jenna, I have, I have loved this conversation. I have learned so much from you. And, and just even more so, I'm sure the women here have loved it. I will be promoting her products, so you'll have a link below. Um, Jenna, tell them a little bit about, um, uh, it's not that expensive. It's a really very affordable so product. It's, yeah, the bundle is $39.95. And so you get the ball, you get the pump that comes with it, conveniently yes. comes with it. And I'm going to say, ladies, I know some of you are going to take inspired action and click on Dr. Anita's link. When you get your product, your the needle of your pump is in the sliding handle. <laughs> it took me a while to find it. <laughs> like, I didn't get a, I didn't get a, yeah. yeah. oh, I thought right? that. Yes, they put it there so it doesn't get broken or lost during shipping. Right, right, which is brilliant, actually. Oh, thank you. And the biggest thing that I, I mean, yes, the product, but the education is, you know, the product is only as good as the person That's and right. how they're using it. So you get a full training course with me. It's called Create Your Pelvic Floor Upgrade. And I want to say one thing. If you flip the cooch ball 180 degrees, it's also called the gooch ball. So ladies, if you have men in your life, they have pelvic floors too. And so like Jason and I, we use the same ball. With your $39 investment, you're getting the ball, the pump, the Create Your Pelvic Floor Upgrade course. And I've got a course with Jason in it called Gooch Power. because. I love it of you know post prostate cancer erectile dysfunction men not being able to empty their bladder fully um just tight hips back constipation cold tingly feet all these things are linked back to the pelvic floor and i just would love to join you or have you join me on my soapbox so that more of us get educated um and kind of you know understand that our body is brilliant it just needs the right information and it will heal when given the opportunity. So one of the things I definitely want to say to each and every one of you is not only is Jana brilliant, as you can see, um, I want to encourage you because I know there are quite a few of you ladies who have your own groups. Um, please help Jana get this message out to the world. Invite her to be a speaker. You can connect to me. I'll connect her to you and then have her do what, exactly what she's done here. Let's have her do that around the world because some of you have some really large women's groups that I'm a part of that I would love to see her come in and begin to have this kind of training and this conversation over and over again. And right now there's like three people I'm going to introduce you to Jenna who have large groups that I think need to hear your message and I want to make sure we get them to them um one is Jenna so Jenna and Jenna that's going to be funny to watch you Jenna has like I think 50,000 in her group so um I'll definitely get you connected to her and I know there's some other women in here who've got some as well and I just think if we all come together and we start healing our root chakra, our whole entire physical, mental, emotional body so that we can manifest the highest level of success because we are in alignment and we're well. And please, Jen, tell me if I'm not right, but I I, I really, now I'm going to use my ball a thousand times more because I've gotten more educated. I kind of ran through the training. I didn't really study it the way she explained it. And it now makes so much more sense. And it's 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 even what I've experienced in using it myself. So I'm very, very honored, very excited. Jenna, can you tell them what are you up to next and how can they reach you besides you know the link that I'll share with them to order their yes. own ball thank you Dr. Anita so I I have a webinar on Thursday that I would love to invite you ladies to it really is an it's an extension of of this it's called follow your bliss 
And it, we kind of teed it up at the beginning of this, um, of our interview, you know, our conversation today is that for some reason, as divine feminine beings, we have come to believe that we need to do it on ourselves, that we need to wear that badge of honor, like, look at all I can do, and I'm disconnected, I'm overwhelmed, I'm, 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 right? Great, great. And so um, I would love to, and I'll, I'll get um, the link, uh, we can maybe put it in your yes. Facebook group yes. for that. It's follow your bliss. I would love to invite um, your community to that. And I just want to let, you know, let your audience understand that I, you know, please reach out. Like if you have, you know, you can find me, direct message me, the cooch ball on Instagram um, is the best way to get a hold of me or info at meta district meta with two T's.com is another way to get a hold of me. And, um, and I have all that information. So if any of you are wanting to get a hold of Jenna, just reach out to me. You guys know how to get to connect it to me. I don't want to call you guys. You ladies know how to get to connect it to me. And I will connect you to her right away. Um, I believe in her product. I love who Jenna is. And I know that there's so much more stuff that we're going to do together to change your life and change the lives of women around the world. So Jenna, thank you so much for being here with me today. I have absolutely loved this. You're a fantastic speaker. And um, this has been wonderful. And I can't wait to get on my cooch. <laughs> I'm thank like, you. this is going to be a regular thing now. I've only been doing, usually I do it every two, uh, like two or three days a week. But now it's going to become a non-negotiable um, habit and a lifestyle this is part of my lifestyle and i think all of you and i want to have as many of you let me check real quickly just to see if there are any messages on the video um let's see scroll 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 excellent information we absolutely love this please send us the link i will do that right now so we've got quite a few women who watched it and i know this is going to grow actually what i think i'm going to do jenna if you're open to it um i'll have you put this on my personal page i think this video is worth sharing so that every woman can see it awesome. it's just the amazing. information is that phenomenal amazing thank you all right my love thank you very much everybody i'll see you probably tomorrow later on this evening because you know i like to drop by and just say hi <laughs> and just see how all of you were doing again jana love you and um, fantastic session today thanks a lot hang on with me if you can for a moment mm -hmm. all right everybody bye Oh, wait, it's going to, I'll connect to you behind because as soon as I hang up, it's going to hang. All right, uh, disconnect. We're going to end. <laughs> Bye, Jenna.